The next part of Lecture 16 deals with the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law says that pressure times volume equals moles of gas multiplied by the ideal gas constant multiplied by the temperature. I sometimes call this pivnert. The ideal gas law was derived from isolating two different variables and seeing the effect. One of those laws investigated pressure and volume. That's known as Boyle's law. Another one for volume and temperature is known as Charles' law. Volume and moles of gas are related in Avogadro's law, and pressure and temperature are related in Guy Lussac's law. Let's look at each of these relationships individually. In Boyle's law, the conditions are set up so that the moles of gas and the temperature, and of course the ideal gas law constant, are all kept constant. So if we take pressure times volume under condition one, and I'll just choose some arbitrary conditions, how about four atmospheres multiplied by four liters? This results in 16 atmosphere liters. This means that if the volume is changed, the pressure has to adjust so that their product is 16 atmosphere liters. So if, for example, the pressure increases to eight atmospheres, then the volume must decrease to two liters. So what this means is that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. When one increases, the other one decreases. Isn't this similar to wavelength and frequency? This picture here shows a sealed container kept at the same temperature. And if we have a volume of gas at some particular pressure, if the volume is decreased, the pressure will increase. For an in-person lecture, I have some demonstrations. I'll have to ask you to watch these YouTube videos after viewing this lecture because these videos are monetized and I don't want to make a copyright violation. Boyle's Law has particular application to scuba diving. You only have to get 33 feet down in the water before the pressure is two atmospheres. So when going down, the pressure outside the lungs is greater than inside. So your lungs will collapse unless you have higher pressure air from the regulator to breathe. But this introduces issues when surfacing. If you surface too quickly, the pressure inside the lungs and the capillaries at two atmospheres is greater than the outside, so your volume expands. This means that some blood vessels are going to break if the expansion is too fast. The next relationship we'll look at is Charles' Law. So I'm going to rearrange this equation by dividing by pressure and temperature so that I get volume and temperature on one side and the variables that I will keep constant on the other side. So suppose I have volume and temperature under condition one. I'll choose eight liters and four Kelvin. So this computes to two liters per Kelvin. That means if I change conditions, the ratio still needs to be two liters per Kelvin. So imagine the temperature warms up to 8 Kelvin. That also means the volume of the gas will expand to 16 liters to keep the same ratio. So this is what's called directly proportional. When temperature increases, volume increases. This is kind of like frequency and energy for light. Once again, please watch this video. You'll find the link in Moodle. To give you an idea of a lab experiment that can be used to investigate this, we have a syringe where the moles of gas and the pressure are kept constant. And in ice water, we see a particular volume. 
And when the water is warmed up, the volume in the syringe is greater. This brings up an opportunity to explain the formula that converts Kelvin scale and Celsius. The experiment was done by taking different moles of gases and measuring their volume at 100 degrees Celsius and at lower temperatures. It didn't matter how many moles of gas were taken, all the lines intersected with one particular point. This point is the predicted temperature at which the volume of the gas is zero. And this intersection happens to occur at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. So a new temperature scale was created in which this intersection was given the value of zero degrees Kelvin. It is the absolute coldest temperature that can be reached, and many scientists have tried throughout the years. I believe we've gotten down to about 0 0.02 degrees Kelvin, but certainly have never gone to negative Kelvin degrees. Kelvin cannot be negative. The next law is Avogadro's law. So once again, I'll rearrange this equation and divide by pressure and moles of gas so that I get volume divided by moles of gas on one side, and I'll keep the other variables constant. So volume divided by moles of gas under one condition, let's choose 11.2 liters and half a mole. This ratio is 22.4 liters per mole, which, by the way, is the typical volume of a gas at room temperature and pressure. This means if we change the moles of gas, we still have to have the same ratio of 22.4 liters per mole. So if the moles of gas increases to 2 moles, then the volume increases to 44.8 liters. This is another relationship that is directly proportional. So when I am in person in class, I blow up a balloon. The pressure outside the balloon is typically constant, and the temperature is slightly warmer than room temperature due to the exhaling of air. But as everyone can imagine, more blowing into the balloon means more gas, more moles of gas, and a bigger balloon. The last relationship is Guy-Lussac's law. This time, we'll divide by temperature and volume, such that pressure and temperature are on one side, and moles of gas and the volume are kept constant. So pressure divided by temperature under condition 1 might be something like 4 atmospheres divided by 20 Kelvin. So that would be 0.2 atmospheres per Kelvin. If I increase the temperature to 40 degrees, then the pressure must also increase to 8 atmospheres in order to keep the same ratio. This is again directly proportional. So here is another video for you to watch that describes the relationship between temperature and pressure. Here is a question for you. A 22 liter balloon with 28 grams of air at 298 Kelvin, which is approximately the temperature of a typical room, is in a room at one atmosphere. The most incredible high pressure system comes by, and the pressure in the room is increased to two atmospheres. What is the new volume of the balloon, and how are volume and pressure related? So I'll remind you that volume times pressure under condition 1 has to equal volume times pressure under condition 2. So we can pick out from the question the original volume, the original pressure, and the new pressure. So we would be solving for volume. So kindly solve this. You'll find opportunities in your homework to work with some of the other laws.
Here's an example where we can use the ideal gas law to calculate the pressure. The question asks, what is the pressure in millimeters of mercury inside a 7.2 liter container filled with 13 grams of carbon dioxide at 35 degrees Celsius? The ideal gas law is PV equal nRT, and I'm going to rearrange this because we're interested in solving for pressure. So now it's just a matter of substituting the other variables. Moles of gas, well, I have grams of gas, and if I divide by the molecular weight, I will get moles of gas. R, that's a constant. Temperature. Should I use Celsius? Hmm, I think I should use Kelvin. So I should remember to take the temperature in Celsius and add 273.15 to get to units of Kelvin. And my volume is good in liters, which are SI units. So here are all the substitutions laid out for you. And let's look at how the units cancel. Grams cancel. Moles of gas cancel, degrees Kelvin cancel, and liters cancel. So my solution is going to be in atmospheres. But the question asks me for the pressure in units of millimeters of mercury. So I'll need to use a conversion factor that there are 760 millimeters of mercury in one atmosphere. This will give me a pressure of 789 millimeters of mercury. So now that you've seen the example, please answer this question. It's exactly the same question, except I've changed the gas and the temperature and some other things. One sticking point for students, remember that you're working with F2. So when you convert from grams to moles, remember that the molecule we're dealing with is F2.